Hello all, welcome back to another video and welcome to Sammy G's World of Cinema. Today on the channel I'm going to be doing my first double bill review. This was actually my first ever um, double bill experience at the cinema. I went along <laughs> to Tyneside Cinema last night, the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey double bill. I know the first movie has had a bit of a reputation for being a, like a shockingly bad film and I think that kind of put me off for a, a canny while to be honest but then watching Dave of Savage Zombie reviews review of the first film and he gave such a wonderful review of that film. I'll leave a link to Dave's um, review review to that, guys, because that kind of what inspired me to um, go and see that this movie. I would give this film a clean slate, and I know um, also Aaron over at Screen Stars has reviewed both of these films. I'll leave a link to Aaron over at Screen Stars reviews. So the first film, Reese Frake, Waterfield. This is his debut feature length film and this film had a budget of woof a hundred grand and it made back 5.2 million dollars which is just phenomenal. The film focuses on Christopher Robin at the start who goes away for to college. His um, fellow friends in the Hundred Acre Woods, you know, Pooh Bear, Piglet, Eeyore and Tigger and Rabbit. We've no Christopher Robin in sight and then they, they have nothing to eat, they have little to no shelter. They evolve into bloodthirsting creatures. Meanwhile, five years later, Christopher Robin returns to the Hundred Acre Woods after he finishes college and he becomes a doctor. Christopher starts to rekindle his past again and he starts to be acquainted with Pooh Bear and Piglet for the first time in five years once again. But they are not the lovable creatures. They are these like cannibal murderous creatures and they'll do everything in their power to kill any human being that um, strives on their turf. A group of girls at university that go on a holiday to this remote house in the Hundred Acre Wood. They are soon to be intruded by a couple of unwanted visitors, or should I say, the a couple of the owners of the Hundred Acre Wood. Right. <laughs> this is a bad film, right? It's not good, but do you know what, guys? Being there with a great crowd last night at Tyneside Cinema, from the get-go, I knew I was going to have such a ball with this film. That is exactly what happened here, folks. This looks really good for the film's um, budget. And, you know, some of the cinematography with, like, the woodland and, of, of course, um, uh, the Hundred Acre Wood, it looks great. Some of the lighting was pretty good as well. You know, some of the fire effects in there as well, just to add, you know, looks pretty decent. For I liked the look of Pooh Bear. Holy shit. This film just becomes a bloodbath. It is utter carnage. When you see Pooh Bear acquainted with Christopher Robin and a couple of the other visitors, my God, some of the girls from this university um, in this remote house, they make some laughable decisions, which is just so funny funny to watch. Um, there's one scene where they're by um, like Pooh Bear and I think Piglet as well as, as 
is by this swimming pool. It takes them a while to find out, oh, we, we, we could go that way uh, to escape from um, like Pooh Bear. I'm sure they're lovely people, guys, in real life, but man, they did not put on the best performances at all here. However, they were likeable characters at the same time, and they had they they were just given with what they had to work with. Of course, Piglet I thought looked pretty cool as well. I think I did prefer Pooh Bear in this film, but Piglet was a decent enough like side antagonist in this film. There were some really brutal kills. There's one scene where you see Pooh Bear. He's driving a car for a, a split second. Some of the outcomes in this film is not a pretty sight indeed, folks. There's also one scene where a couple of the girls in this Again, this remote house that they, like they're currently hiding on the landing from Pooh Bear. It takes one of these girls a canny while to figure out. Oh, do you know what? I've just remembered. I got this plan that we can use in order to attempt to kill Pooh Bear. It took her that long to figure it out, and it is so funny to watch and the way Pooh Bear would just crop up as well just you know you like you look at the window or you just look there and he's like there and he's grin and it is funny to watch it gets even better when you see Christopher Robin you know he's drawn out some of his lines and his cries saying don't kill me Pooh I'm so sorry I left you I'm sure this guy is a lovely fella and all I'm sure I'd get on like a house on fire with this guy but he did not put in a good performance in this but at the same time he was really funny to watch and the way he would just, he would say, no, Pooh, do you remember what we used to have and that? And he was just drawing his, light, his lines out. And I, I just, oh God, I was loving every minute of it. And then you get to meet like another group of characters in the latter part of the film. And the way they are acquainted with Pooh Bear and Piglet. Oh my God, guys. It has the audience in hysterics it's like it was l the laugh out loud l lol moment i think the film opens up really well the opening storyboard of how christopher robin was acquainted with pooh bear piglet and eeyore and tigger and rabbit and it's like in like sort of done in an am animation and i did like that they put a bit of backstory into this if i'm being honest with the entertainment level. I'm going to give this a solid 6 out of 10. I gave it a 3 star out of 5 on Letterbox. I really enjoyed this. I really did, you know, being there with a great crowd last night and we were just all laughing. It's all right, you know, if, if there's like the odd jump scare that happens every now and then, but it doesn't necessarily have to be scary in order to be an enjoyable um little horror movie. I think as well, you can still have fun with a bad movie and that is exactly what I did with this film last night. I was just having a ball with this. It's a bad film, but it's a fantastic, fun film as well. It's not fun what happens, you know, with some of the outcomes in here, especially for, you know, one of the two of the characters, but it was so entertaining. And this is the sequel, directed again by Reese Frick Waterfield, Returning in the director's chair, this takes place after the drastic um, outcomes of the first film. Christopher Robin escapes from the Hundred Acre Massacre and he returns to his childhood town of Ashdown and spends quality time with his parents. With the drastic murders that happens in the Hundred Acre Wood, Christopher is seen to be made res partially responsible for what happened 
in the 100 Acre Woods. Christopher Robin has nightmares of Pooh Bear. He goes to like um, therapy for, um, for this and to what happened in the first film that really keeps coming back and haunting him. He starts to remember majority of his past, comes uh, flooding back in his memory. Meanwhile, while this is going on with Christopher Robin in his hometown of Ashdown, Pooh Bear, Piglet and new additions, Tigger and Owl, decide to flee from the 100 Acre Wood into Christopher Robin's hometown of Ashdown, where for a lot of these local residents, utter carnage, a bloodbath is approaching their way. I really enjoyed this, guys. Whilst I think in, in comparison to the first film, it was really missing that sort of laugh out loud factor that really played a part into the first film for a vast majority of the movie. Having said that, I still did really enjoy the sequel for what it was. It took it into a more serious and darker tone in comparison to the first film. I think it, it took itself a lot more serious and I think you kind of would have expected that considering as well this film has got a bigger scale, it's got a bigger budget. Yeah, you can tell this film has got a bigger budget, a um, bigger scale to it. Um, you know, I really liked um, some of the um, colour grading sequences that this film had in store, especially with like um, this nightclub um, where there's like, the, I think there's like a green purple tinge. Also the look of Pooh Bear as well. And you, you know, like you can definitely tell from a visual standpoint, Pooh Bear looks great in this and Piglet's got a completely different look in this film. A lot more bolshier, a lot more brooding and I really liked that about Piglet. My favourite part of the film was probably Owl. I really liked Owl's sort of like menacing, dark approach and I thought the voice actor and the actor who was playing Owl did a really good job. Some of the acting in this film was actually pretty decent. Apologies, I haven't named a lot, um, many of these actors, by the way, guys. Do apologise about that. The guy who played um, Christopher Robin in this, he did a really good job. I think it's Scott Chambers. He did a pretty good job in this. Christopher Robin's love interest in the film, uh, the actress did a pretty good job in this as well. One scene where she's um, looking after, um, I think, um, this police guard's um, grandson and the grandson is just sat down and watching like um, the first Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey film. I really liked that this film really took recognition of the first film and also the reference to Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and that um, scene was pretty cool as well. Also some of the lighting and the fire effects again looked pretty sh uh, pin sharp in this. As I can tell you now guys the brutality, the blood fest takes it to an extreme level in this film especially like in the opening sequence. Pwah, you see this bloodbath in a whole new light, one scene like in with the, the traps and that, it, it you know, it it is a whole new kettle of fish. I really liked Tigger in this. I thought the actor did a pretty decent job. I really liked that that scene where I think it's like a um, sort of basement and he's uh, like lurking around in, in each corner and he's been like and he's been really in imitating. The film had a really interesting backstory of Christopher Robin's past as well. It took a bit of a twist and turn. It had a more serious, darker layer to it. it. Took it for what it was. It's a different film to the first film. I think we're gonna get like a, a like a horror um Bambi movie and a horror um, Peter Pan movie, which that one is going to be directed by uh, Scott Chambers, who played Christopher Robin in this sequel here. So I'm really curious to see 
like how that's going to turn out. And I think that is coming out um, later in the year. So I'm really looking forward to that. And again, I hope we are going to get a cinema release of that. But the ending, I found a bit cliche with um, this sequel. I did really like the post credit scene. I liked one of the other side characters to this, the um, Scottish guy who had a, a bit of a, a back history with some of like these murderous creatures in the past, you know, and he, he was telling the story. I, I really liked like that stuff as well in the film. So Blood and Honey 2, um, not great, but I did, did still quite like this one. I'm going to give it a... 5 out of 10 for what it is. It was a decent, um, like, slasher film, this was. And whilst this is the better made movie compared to the first film, and I can totally get why most people are preferring this over the, the original film, I totally get that. I think in terms of the most enjoyment, I definitely got it from like the first film, but not to take away from this sequel, because I still had a very good time with this. I have seen two films in one day at the cinema, but as a one-piece double build, a fantastic first double build for me, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do more with this uh, continuous sort of like um, slasher like universe i've got my ticket there guys the second movie gets its um blu-ray release there i will be um like picking that and um, both of those films on blu-ray and probably watching them around um the halloween season as well do let me know your thoughts on winnie the pooh blood and honey one and two i would love to know your thoughts on both of these films i, I would love to know all of that good stuff in the comments down below and um are you looking forward to the upcoming movies in this uh, slash uh, universe? I would love to know all of that good stuff in the comments down below. One more thing, guys, I actually forgot to mention. Um, it was pretty cool to discover these were like um, British, um, like horror independent movies as well. And they were a fantastic time at the cinema. So thanks for watching, cheers for stopping by, and until next time, I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye.